Hey guys, it's Steph. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be setting up my October pages in my A Visitor Raven uh, Archer and Olive A5 Dot Grid Journal. First, let's go ahead and flip through September. While you see how the pink fall vibes of September went, let me tell you how excited I am about what is to come. Uh, materials this month. Uh, the Pigma Micron 02, Pigma Micron 005, the Tombow N75 Gray, the Red Acrylograph, I think from the Cool Fall collection from Archer and Olive last year, and then the Red Primary Uniposca paint pen. Um, both paint pens are in a 0.7. And then obviously the microns are uh, 0.2 millimeters and the 005, which is 0.1 millimeters or something like that. It's very small, very fine print. Uh, I'm not a, an amazing artist. This is not hand drawn. I did uh, print off a stock image of Pose Bust, uh, a couple of different skulls and a raven and use those to transfer the images into my journal and then just kind of went over them in these pens. I did not want to worry about trying over and over to draw a decent looking Edgar Allan Poe. Um, his face is iconic and recognizable and I just thought transferring was going to save me so much time and it did. Uh, still, even just going over this cover page alone took an hour um, and that's not including figuring out where I wanted to put things, transferring the images in, or anything like that. As you can see I'm going in with the Pigma Microns. I wanted this very much to look like a hand-drawn image, um, like something quick somebody would have put together, you know, for like a newspaper at the time or something. Just a portrait. And this idea of all the things that came out of this beautiful mind. Um, the Raven, Cask of Amontillado, uh, the Telltale Heart, the Fall of the House of Usher, um, the Premature Burial. Like these are all stories that I love and I wanted to incorporate, incorporate most of my favorites. So you have Ravens, you have um, Skulls, which represent both Cask of Amontillado as well as the Mask of the Red Death. You have the spilled wine glass from Cask of Amontillado, a human heart from the Telltale Heart, along with the floorboards. Um, you have the clock for the Mask of the Red Death as well. So there's a lot of imagery um, and creepiness going into this theme. And there are some misses and there are some great wins. So I didn't want to ruin the image of the raven by making it black entirely because then you wouldn't be able to see the detail. So I went with the N75 and just layered three or four layers to make it look very shadowy. Um, and then I used the red paint pens as accents here and there to, a to add a little bit of a macabre um, morbid detail, the idea of blood or of glowing eyes, just that little extra creepy factor to go with this theme. Um, yes, I could talk about Poe all day. Um, one of my favorite memories of Poe is I was about 15 and I was visiting my grandparents in Virginia back when I still lived in California and my grandmother took me and my sister to the Fort Monroe Casemate Museum. It's a museum on Fort Monroe in Hampton, Virginia. And in the museum, they had Edgar Allan Poe's army uniform on display. I can't remember the exact details, but I think he was stationed at Fort Monroe after the Civil War. He was not um, in the Civil War, he was uh, later. But in the year shortly after the Civil War, I believe he was stationed at Fort Monroe. I could be wrong about that, but they had his uniform on display and you could of course buy those fake parchment, you know, things of the Raven. 
uh, which I did and I tried to memorize that poem but I could never remember more than like the first six or seven stanzas and then I would get like lost because they all kind of start out the same um anyway I digress one of the misses I decided to try like a glowing dot in the skull eyes with the red and you'll see me like try that didn't like it so I kind of wiped it off and then went back over it with black again and then the other miss on this page which caused a whole a whole catastrophe of a mess I tried to take the red uni Posca paint pen and do like a blood splatter because that would have made this so perfect um, however it did not want to splatter and it was annoying me but I ended up getting the red paint pen just like oozed and it went everywhere and I had to clean it up and it was a mess but we moved past it it didn't ruin the picture and it doesn't really even get on this page I had flipped to the back of the journal to try to bring more paint to the nib so that I could splatter it and it, the red just went all over like the last page of my journal and I apologize if there's background noise it's quite windy today and it sounds also like my neighbor might be mowing their yard so apologies if you can hear that we also get quite a lot of jet planes flying around here so it makes recording voiceovers a little bit difficult sometimes I will say I was pretty proud of the wine glass that I drew here just because I can't usually do anything remotely realistic um, so I was pretty happy with how that turned out here you see me trying and failing miserably to get it to work and me then trying to clean up that mess so I was like never mind moving on uh, I added the floorboards just because I thought the page had too much um, empty space uh, and I kind of really wanted a very collagey mess of Poe themed things so I added the brick wall from the cask of Amontillado and the floorboards from the Telltale Heart as a kind of backdrop to the images um, and I like to think that while stationed at Fort Monroe these stories were being dreamt up or were being inspired there is a rumor I don't know how true it is there is a rumor that the cask of Amontillado uh, was inspired by real life events of things that happened while he was um, enlisted which you know I don't think is an unlikely situation but if you've read the cask of Amontillado that's pretty terrifying uh, that that might have been based on real events moving on to the quote page I again went with the telltale heart um, easily probably the most popular Poe story let me know in the comments by the way which is your favorite work of Poe's uh, he has some great love poems and obviously some very dark poems as well very good at capturing human emotion and really describing it in beautiful ways I digress again I went with the floorboards um, in the telltale heart if you haven't read it or aren't familiar with Poe uh, it's a story of a descent into madness through guilt really and while I'm not here for a literary analysis essentially a guy kills an old man because his eye creeps him out and he chops him up puts him under the floorboards and then some inspectors come because they heard a scream in the middle of the night and he thinks he can hear the beating heart under the floorboards and then finally he goes entirely insane and like confesses to the whole thing um it's a great read you should definitely read that at some point this this Halloween season uh, very appropriate but he um, everything was under the floorboards so I kind of drew these floorboards here and then kind of did this like they're chopped open and then wrote the quote inside which is a line from that story which is it is impossible to say how first the idea entered my brain but once conceived it haunted me day and night and then I just added some shadows to make it look like drawn floorboards essentially super happy with how that turned out for the calendar page 
I struggled. I struggled with this arched black hat and I completely forgot when I went to go start filming this that I hadn't fixed it. <laughs> and so you'll see me at the end of this fix that cat and add um, a red masquerade mask for the Mask of the Red Death. I was really proud of these hand-drawn bats and moon situation. Um, I also hand drew the reaper slash death and the clock on the right, the candles, and of course the quote, uh, nevermore above the raven there. I adapted one of the skulls that I transferred, uh, rotated it a little bit, and then didn't include the bottom jaw so that it looks like just the top half of a skull. And then I stuck the raven image so that it looks like the raven is standing on said skull. Uh, that's how I achieved that. I just took the same sketched, uh, printed out things and transferred them uh, kind of together one at a time. And then I drew those clouds around the moon. Uh, just, you know, things that give me Poe vibes, bats, full moons, black cats, candles. So this was a page that normally the calendar page is my favorite. I think that the cover page, this one, this time is obviously my favorite. Like that's so beautiful but I do love this calendar page because of that death there like I was so proud of hand drawing a skull for the first time and then if you're not familiar with the mask of the red death there is a plague you know wreaking havoc through Europe and a prince, Prince Prospero, Prospero, however you prefer to say it, uh, he invites a thousand of his friends, nobles, knights, things like that, into his castle, and then he locks it down so nobody else can get in, nobody can get out, and they have a party. And there's these rooms with different color decorations, stained glass windows, and the last room with this giant clock in the hall uh, is covered in black velvet and has red stained glass. So it looks like blood soaked and very macabre and creepy. And needless to say, locked doors don't stop disease. There's, there's death that ensues. Uh, the intent behind this story is that, you know, nobody can escape death and death is a dominating force of the world. So that is the moral of that story. Another one of my favorites of Poe's uh, that I had to incorporate into this monthly setup. And I think what I'm going to do for the weekly pages is every week will be dedicated to one of Poe's stories. I definitely want to do like the different rainbow stained glass of the... Mask of the Red Death. I haven't really decided how I want to do, I'm gonna do the Raven, um, I have to. And then I'm not sure which other stories I wanna do. If you have suggestions, uh, put them in the comments. Let me know what your favorite Poe story is and I will do a weekly possibly based on one of those. Um, and let me know if you would like to see those weekly setups. I would film and post them if it was something that would interest you guys. Most of the time, weekly setup videos don't get like any views, uh, but with something like Poe themes and with it being October, um, I can see possibly there being a bit more interest in weekly setups if they're really on theme like that. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing and I will try to make that happen. So I'm also pretty proud of how this black cat came out here. Um, again, I don't usually draw animals or living things or realistic looking things, but one of the things I knew I wanted was a black cat, uh, familiar 
with its hair all like, oh my gosh, I can't even think of the word, with all of its hair standing up, back arched and all that. And I finally got to a point where the proportions were right and I was happy with how it was looking. And then I didn't like how deep red the eyes were. So I actually do go back, um, cause you can see there, I do go back and use the Uniposca red pen instead, the brighter red, just because I think it stands out more with how black the cat is. And I think that that helps a lot. And because I wanted another pop of color and I thought that that space up there needed something, a friend suggested uh, something red in that area. So I went ahead and added a masquerade mask from the Mask of the Red Death because it was a masquerade party they were at. And then I added just a very subtle little doodle hint, hinting that there's a face there as well. Because again, I can't really hand draw faces. Uh, but I wanted there to be an image that it wasn't just a mask floating there, that it was actually a face. And then when I wasn't happy with how it looked, uh, the mask itself, the way that I evened it out was I took the red, or I took the black and I just kind of drew over the red until I felt like it was even looking. And that's how I did that one. By the time I got to the habit and mood tracker for this setup, I was um, a little overwhelmed with these ideas and with what I wanted to do. So when I got to this page, I wasn't really sure how to doodle it because I wanted, you know, the big images and I wanted the themes and it felt kind of like it was getting repetitive. And also with the habit and mood tracker, you don't have a lot of room uh, for doodles because they're very functional pages. So just FYI, the rest of the pages way less doodle heavy than those first two setup pages. Um, I still love how this one turned out. I love the spider that I'm drawing right now on the video. I love the idea of it being like a desk with a quill and inkwell, uh, candle and skull, like that being like, Pose desk for writing and then the spider in the corner the bats and all that just kind of this gives me very cozy Poe vibes even though the imagery is still fairly creepy uh, to me this is this is what cozy looks like spider webs and bats and skulls are also surprisingly difficult to get decent looking. I was really struggling with that quill as well. And then the, the headers. I just tried to go Poe-ish with the headers, hence Morbid Habits, Macabre Mood, same mood tracker I've been doing for a long time, so nothing surprising on this page. I did decide to add overwhelm to my list of moods to track because I found that when I was feeling overwhelmed, I was rating it as anxiety, but I'm really trying to separate anxiety that is generalized versus anxiety that is situational. So I was thinking overwhelm for a more general sense of anxiety or for anxiety about everything that needs to be done and isn't getting done versus anxiety about a specific situation like socially or something so I added that just as an update to my mood tracker ghastly goals I'll fill in later but I did want to go ahead and add another raven here and then instead of brain dump I called it cranial purge just again making it sound a little more poetic a little more poetic huh I'm not gonna do that again I promise more poish with the term cranial purge instead of brain dump with the skull obviously as the doodle for that page.
Altogether, it took me three hours to do all of these, not including the sketching in. So definitely a longer setup. And the last page that I'm going to be setting up for October is my fitness trackers. Um, I recently joined a gym with a friend. We've been going three times, two, three times a week, and that's kind of the goal is to go three times a week. So for October, I really want to track what types of workouts I'm doing, when I'm working out, how many steps I'm taking, and my measurements because I want to focus more on my fitness and my health versus like my weight. Uh, so I'll be tracking like inches lost and things like that instead of my weight throughout October. And then of course I went with the anatomic heart as the doodle for this page as well. And then that there uh, is for the weekly total steps. And I think that's going to do it. This is the final flip through of my October 2022 Edgar Allan Poe theme. I can't wait to start using these pages. It is just making my heart so happy. My little morbid heart loves this theme. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you haven't already, go ahead and like, subscribe. Let me know which of these pages is your favorite and what theme you're doing for October. And until next time, guys, have a great one.